Let's go. A Sir Walter Jones. Who is it? A Sir Walter Jones. What's his name? A Sir Walter Jones. Whose show is this? A Sir Walter Jones. Who is it? A Sir Walter Jones. Say it again. A Sir Walter Jones. Who are you with? A Sir Walter Jones. One more again. A Sir Walter Jones. The Sir Walter Jones Show. Co host Alvin Carter. We are a Christian talk show in where we tackle all the hot topics in a believer's walk. Monday is Men's Night. The Men's Chronicles, a woman's guide to men. A Sir Walter Jones. Who is it? A Sir Walter Jones. What's his name? A Sir Walter Jones. Who show was this? A Sir Walter Jones. Who is it? A Sir Walter Jones. Say it again. A Sir Walter Jones. Who are you with? A Sir Walter Jones. One more again. A Sir Walter Jones. Ladies, what do you want to know? How bad do you want to know it? What are you willing to do to find out? Tune in to the Men's Chronicles right here at the Sir Walter Jones Show at UBM Praise. Hello, everybody. Sir Walter of the Sir Walter Jones Show. I am he. It is Monday. Monday, Monday. It is Men's Chronicles, a woman's guide to men. And on uh, Mondays, what we do is uh, we sit around the microphone, a bunch of men, and we talk about men issues. It doesn't matter what the issue is. It doesn't matter whether you are, uh, well, a believer or a non-believer, although this is a Christian show, and we try to win those who are non-believers. But I do have a lot of people who do listen because they just are interested in uh, some of the well, core values and those that are what they call value. Um, I have a lot of uh, atheists who do listen in on our shows. Uh, I have a lot of atheist Facebook friends. They're out there. I probably have more than the average Christian. And probably the reason why I have so many of them is because I, I guess I talk their language. Uh, not so much their language of uh, agreeing, um, but I talk some sense to them. I, I teach a gospel of love. Not of acceptance, uh, but of love. Uh, I hate the sin, but I don't hate the sinner. And many of them who are unbelievers think that Christians hate the sinner. And and it it seems like it uh, it almost comes across as being believable because the way we talk to them. We don't talk to them properly. Uh, And so I talk to them like I would talk to my brother. And when they're wrong, I tell them that they're wrong. Uh, and they come back because they see a spirit in me and they'll recognize it. Uh, and so Mondays we uh, we do again. We sit around and talk about uh, the issues of of the day and the issues of the day could be anything. Um, the day of uh, not so much the current day, but the day It's like taking care of the total man, the whole man, the wholeness of a man, not just his finger hurting or somebody stumped on his foot, but also the total man as far as the spirit man is concerned uh everything that needs to happen to him to make him a better man we try to, to talk about it today today we're talking about domestic violence actually it's a two-part series today and tomorrow domestic violence against men is today uh and uh we need to find out what's going on in that situation i'll never forget uh, seeing those words come across the screen, and I thought that that was uh, the most ridiculous thing I'd ever seen. Domestic violence against men. I said to myself, there was no way that I could possibly see a strong and capable man being victim of uh, domestic or even uh, mental um, attacks from women. How was that, abs- that possible? Uh, and then as I continue to live this life that I live, I'm almost 50 now. Uh, just uh, not too long from now, I'll be that big five zero. And I realized as I got older that uh, this actually do happen because it had happened to me a couple of times. I just didn't know how to um, read it. Uh, well, we look at violence as something, someone striking someone, and you see the evidence of the strike by the redness of the eye or marks, scratch marks on a man's face from the fingernails of his woman. Uh, but the Bible also uses the word violent, uh, and you guys quote it all the time. You say the kingdom suffers violence, and the violence take it by force. 
Uh, and but, but when we see the word violent, we think that it only means a physical attack towards someone on an opposing side. But that's not true in that particular scripture. It's actually talking about people who are bombarding heaven, trying to get in and trying to get in violently. Uh, and then the Bible used poetic justice there as a license to use violent as trying to rush in there like uh, you guys do on Black Friday when it's time right before Christmas. You guys are waiting in front of Walmart at four in the morning, violently going in there. That's what it means. But in this case here, violence uh, is both physical and it is mental. And we want to talk about this because men are susceptible to it. And you probably say, how is that possible? Well, it happens a lot. It happens around you. Some of you are listening to me. Men, you're probably a victim of it. Ladies who are listening to me right now, you're probably the ones who are giving the violence. Uh, and you see it on TV. Uh, a lot of you, see, you may see it in our politicians. Okay, you see it in our church houses. You see it amongst the uh, the pastor and the first lady. You see it among Deacon Fryer and his wife. Okay, you see it in the choir, uh, and you see it on your job, your boss and his wife, or or a lady or whatever you call. It. Okay, it's all around. It's not just in our churches. It's everywhere around us. Our neighbors are going through domestic violence and it's a taboo subject. It's hush hush. And just like women who are raped, uh, they don't want to talk about it because of the shame uh, and they have to tell it all. And, and so because they don't want to be shamed, they don't tell it. And many go through life living that life. And then they turn themselves over to a certain type of lifestyle, whether they become promiscuous or whether they become um, they turn over to the gay life whether they just uh, all become prostitutes and some just shut down altogether. They, they don't want to, they don't want s s sex with anybody and uh, things happen to people. And because they're quiet, you don't know why a person acts the way they do. So today and tomorrow is one of those days where we uh, turn off the jokes and uh, get a little serious because this, this subject uh, is uh, very deep and very sensitive Tomorrow, uh, I do have a young lady uh, who will be calling in. Uh, we'll talk about her story of domestic violence. And, of course, you know, you hear a lot of it about women. And you always think that women are more um, susceptible to it. it. It happens to them more. But the statistics are rising and rising on men. I think I saw 40% or more now are men, believe it or not. And things are changing. I go to a lot of women's forums, and I hear women ask questions to men about certain things and they always tell a man no he's wrong on what he's saying and they'll say all men are dogs all men cheat and all men do all these things but when you look at the statistics though on how much women now are becoming equal to men in everything the women can't sit in anymore uh you guys are in the military you're on the police force you're in construction you're ceos of corporations you're sitting uh, in the and even in the White House, you are the secretaries of state. OK. Um, and if uh, Hillary have her way, she might be sitting right there in the Oval Office. OK. Your mayors, your president, I mean, your um, your governors, and senators and um, you guys are becoming equal with men. So with that opportunity of equality with men, because eventually, eventually your pay will be equal. It's not equal just yet, but it will be equal. Once all that happens, uh, and as it's happening, it's gradually happening now, you'll see that domestic violence against men should not be a surprise to you because women are becoming equal with men in, in all things. So why not men uh, being equally victims of domestic violence? Okay? And when, if you say all men cheat and all these things like that, well, who is he cheating with? Except he being homosexual, he's cheating with another lady, right? So there you have it. Uh, and we can't keep using the same lines we've been using forever. These things are happening. Um, and so I have some articles here. I'm not sure I will be here today. We've got um, uh, we've got uh, some uh, changes that happen here at the station. Administrative changes, managerial changes. Uh, Dion is not here anymore. You know, and I, 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 I'm a bold man. I'm very bold on the mic. And things happen sometimes in African-American companies that uh, you wonder, how are these things happening? Um, and um, I know I, um, who was that, who had a talk show? 
uh, back in the 90s. And uh, he brought uh, Farrakhan on. And shortly after that, he was gone. They had, to, they had to get rid of him. They had to fire him. You know, uh, and uh, Arsenio Hall, I believe it was, because he when he was direct, he defiled those uh, headship. Well, I may just do that day, tomorrow, all week because I can do that. Uh, and I just um, it's amazing how we run our businesses, our, our companies, and then we wonder why people are not supporting us because we're not good in management. We're horrible at it. That's another story. So you won't hear Dion. Um, um, and um, so let's talk about this topic here uh, because before my continents change. Domestic violence. All right. Um, and, and I'm trying to figure out where I want to start because it, it definitely is a, a, a sensitive thing. You know, we just celebrated Father's Day yesterday. And, um, you know, I'm just excited. I have three children, plus I have several that I have adopted out there. I want to give a shout out to all my children out there. If you're listening and we're able to be here, they're out there, many of them. <laughs> and uh, although I, I reared three, I, I, I'm taking um, the leadership headship over other men who I guess some of them saying, you know, you women say that you donated the seed. Well, uh, and I'll take care of it. Let somebody else go ahead and plant the seed. And I'll just, the Bible says one man plants, another man waters. But God makes the increase. So I'll just, uh, I'll just water your seed. Okay. And it will go from there. Uh, but I'm just grateful for all those uh, out there who uh, call me pops. It's, a, it's one of the greatest terms. I don't, I don't have to be president of the United States. I'm Pops, and that's the, one of the greatest terms I can endure. Um, but my daughter surprised me yesterday because, you know, she was telling me that she had to work yesterday, and uh, I believed her. <laughs> I did. And uh, she told me I had to pick up a package downtown. And, and so, you know, I'm thinking, what package could possibly be downtown at 9, 10 o'clock at night? Not sure what. She had me good, though, because she was texting me all the way up until that time. Ah, well, I got to work, and I got to do this now. And so, you know, be sure not to pick up your package. I said, okay, all right, all right, I got you. You know, my son called early that morning. He wished me happy birthday. And my other son, Darius, he hit me up, and I had so many others. Uh, and then I went down there to the Amtrak to pick up my package. And my package was was walking on two feet. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good thing it was a package and not the package <laughs> yeah that, you know what I'm saying cause, cause I, don't, I, can't, I can't I can't I can't do another package so mm-hmm. there she was with a cute self so it was a great Father's Day yeah daughters know how to do it now they know how to do yeah. it yeah mm-hmm. yeah my daughter took me to dinner yesterday yeah did, did she? my son just looked at me and gave me another what up <laughs> yeah your yeah. day coming you better hope and pray <laughs> I know what that's all about yeah, yeah. That's I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't know why fathers just get the shaft, man. Yeah, yeah, fathers do get the shaft. Yeah. Uh, we're talking about domestic violence. Uh, I just kind of gave an intro until you got here. Uh, and, you know, you said some very interesting things uh, last week, Friday or Thursday, I can't remember. And I told you we were, we were going to do a show today. Okay. So, let's dive in here. And I guess... Uh, you know, I've got some reading I can do, and then I've got some testimonials for myself, and then maybe you can tell us some things that you might know about domestic abuse towards men. <laughs> <laughs> no. Because I met your wife. Okay. <laughs> you met my sister, too. <laughs> I sure did. I sure did. Okay, why is my mic louder than mine? I don't understand that. bigger. Oh, you need to turn him down or turn me up. Okay, there you go. Mm-hmm. Just don't turn him on. <laughs> Okay. <coughs> Domestic uh, violence. Um, it says know the signs. Now, here's a, this is um, adult health. This is the Mayo Clinic. All right. So if they say it, then you know it's true. <laughs> it's, like, it's like Wikipedia. Right. If they say it, it's true. Domestic violence against men isn't always easy to identify. And that I do know. But it can be a serious threat. Know how to recognize if you're being abused and how to get help. 
Uh, women aren't the only victims of domestic violence. Understand the signs of domestic violence against men and know how to get help. R- recognize um, domestic violence, also known as intimate partner violence, occurs, mm. be- mm-hmm, occurs between people in an intimate relationship. Domestic violence against men can take many forms, including emotional, sexual, and physical abuse and threats of abuse. Okay. So... I understand the emotional. Okay. Uh, what do you think the sexual is? The sexual abuse could be the denying or the abusive acts that go with sex. You know, sometimes denying sex can be considered abusive because the man or woman, what we're talking about, man, he may not be the type of man that would go out and get it anywhere. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he and it's mental. See, it's it's y'all say for, for women, it's mental, it's just physical. It's mental for men too, to some degree. To most degrees, it is. yes. But then there's also, uh, in some cases, being believe it or not, he don't always want it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I agree with that. He don't, he don't feel like it all the time. No, he doesn't. And then there's the mental abuse of his ineptness. Right. Right. And, and how he may not be what you need him to be. Or capable. That's true. And I think I think the sexual portion is her, uh, uh, let's see, neglecting. Uh, okay. And then her being oversexed. Yeah. Yeah. Meaning yeah. she always have to have it. Yeah. And then he's not capable. So then she makes him feel like. Uh, he's less than a man. Yeah, absolutely. He's inadequate. Yes. Uh, and so, so the emotional and the sexual and then the physical abuse and threats of abuse. It can happen in uh, heterosexual and same-sex relationships, it says here. It might not be easy to recognize domestic violence against men. Early in the relationship, your partner might seem attentive, mm-hmm. uh, generous, mm-hmm. and protective in ways that later turn out to be controlling and frightening. Initially, the abuse might appear as isolated incidents. Your partner might apologize and promise not to abuse you again. Now that usually happens, right? Okay. Especially when partners have been together for a while. You always see the the man beats her up and she calls the cops. The cops take him down to and the jail. She bail him out. And she bail him out. Okay. She just wants them to stop him for that moment because you couldn't take them. Uh-huh. Absolutely. Yeah, and that's tomorrow's show. But uh, it says in, in other relationships, domestic violence against men might include both partners slapping or shoving each other when they get angry. And neither partner seeing himself... Or herself as being abused or controlled. That could sound sexual too. <laughs> it really can. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That's sadoism, is that what we yeah, call it? That, that one is the, the dominant and the, the masochism. Other is the yeah. mm-hmm. uh, this type of violence, however, can still it devastate. Shades of grace. Fit shades of yeah, right. <laughs> can still de- devastate a relationship, causing both physical and emotional damage. You might be experiencing domestic abuse if your partner, okay, and they give us bullet points here. Here's one calls you names, insults you. Or puts you down. Mm-hmm. All right. I think you kind of alluded to that. Uh, prevents you from going to work or school. Why would you think they say that? That's abuse. Mm-hmm. That's abuse in many ways. One, it stops him from being an earner or provider. Number two, you need a break. Yes. You feel like, he feel like he's in bondage. Every step he takes or makes, mm-hmm. he has to give an account for. No, that's not what being a man is. Um, right. And a lot of that could be based on their insecurity. The, the, the other the, partner. The other partner. Yeah, they're insecure enough. So if you're not where I am, I don't want you nowhere except where I know you're at. Yeah. So that's basically turning the home into a cage. Right. Wow. Home into a cage. Yeah. Not just a prison, a cage because yeah. you're stuck. You're bound. Yeah. That's bondage. Bondage is abuse. Yeah. Yeah. I can relate to the not the one about break out. I'm just tell you, you ain't gonna do me like that. Oh, okay. Well, that's <laughs> see, that's you. So, you see, you, you know what you sound like. No. Okay, I'm gonna tell you what you sound like. Oh, you, yeah, you sound like the people who, who they, on the outside looking in. That and those who says if I was back in slavery days, there's no way I let a white man do me like that. No, oh, I don't sound like that. Okay, but until you get into that situation, it's not easy to. Oh no, it's not to put down the victims at all. It's mm-hmm. just me making a point because of not to become one because you can see the signs. I grew up yeah. in it. Okay. I've seen it firsthand. I've watched the fights. I've seen yeah. the Ike and Tina's in the limousines, <laughs> but it was in the living room, so to speak. Now I just purposed in my mind whenever I see the telltale signs that I would avoid that at any, at any and all cost. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Because there's subtle approaches. It starts off with flattery. It starts off with you feeling like, oh, wow, you're so special. Mm -hmm. It starts out with all the wonderful right things said and done. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden it flips. Mm -hmm. And what turns, what changes from uh, flattery and feeling becomes fear and control. That's true. Uh, I was victim of that. You know, I was in a relationship, but I was supposed to went to work. Now, I've been in several relationships, so people have tried to figure out, okay, which one is it? Is it Betty? Is it Ann? <laughs> you it? said it, not me, because mm-hmm, I, mm-hmm. so I, I quit keeping scope. You see what I'm saying? So <clears throat> I can say these things on the show, and then they, you, you don't, you, you can you call. Know which ones you don't. They don't, you don't know which one I'm talking about, because I've been married twice. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm going to say marriage, and y'all can figure out, y'all, y'all can go and call each other tonight and have some cup, a cup of coffee. And talk about call Walter's his, call his yeah. ex-wives. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, did you do that to did him? No, that? that wasn't me. That was the mm-hmm. other one. Mm-hmm. That's what she just mm-hmm. said. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> people be trying their best to figure out. Yeah. They, be, they, oh, they yeah, want to figure out. People are innately nosy. Yeah, they are. They and, really are. And, and, and I'm going to say this, that I really admire and sometimes wonder <laughs> why you're so uh, transparent about certain things about mm-hmm. your own life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because it, it could be, you know, I sometimes say, Lord, who's outside? There's no way for him to come out here. Absolutely. Yeah, I just talked about that before you got here. Oh. Uh, I was talking about the changes that are happening here at the station. Oh, you are? Well, I, I was talking about was that. Uh-huh. And I was talking about uh, Arsenio Hall when he brought in uh, the Muslim man. Farrakhan. Mm-hmm. And then shortly after that, he was gone yeah. because he defiled management. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I really don't care. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I, black businesses, they sometimes run their businesses in the ground. Yeah. It's bad. Because you human resources, they mm-hmm. are a resource. Mm-hmm. And you can't mistreat the resource because what happens is the resource begin to tell the other resources about the business. Yeah. And if you can't get get people to work for you, yeah, exactly, you can't get good yeah. business. Yeah. What 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 man buys a house and burn it down unless he's trying to get the, the insurance? Oh, you're right. You see what I'm saying? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, I I'm transparent toward because I tell the truth, and sometimes Christians get upset at me. Uh, oh man, Christians getting mad. It's the same folks I worry about. Well, that's yeah, thank you for saying that. And you notice how when Jesus, when every time he got upset, he, he didn't get upset with the world. Mm-mm. Who did he get upset with? The, the, the people that call themselves the church. Absolutely. Well, they're not the church. Well, then, right. The Pharisees pretty the much. Sad, the fair and sad folk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. I'm fair. I'm fair, you see. What okay, about you being like <laughs> I'm sad. Well, get happy. Get <laughs> you see? Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm I've trying lost... to get you to see. Uh, uh-huh. All right. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I've lost friends because of my transparency and, and being real. Friends. They were not friends. And and they're passive. And I put up the, I put up the uh, post today uh, about a subject that I, I, I guess I, I did one show on and I was, I was done with it until today, the Bruce Jenner show. And, uh, and I was talking about how. Uh, they celebrated Father's Day for him Sunday. Why? How? How could you? Why would you do that when you barraged us and beat us up to call him a woman, Caitlin? Now you're going to come together and and have a Father's Day celebration for him. He's His not your father anymore. No His whole family came by to wish him a, a Father's ha- was Happy too Father's too late. Day. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Now what, watch what happened comes Mother's Day. And he fair. He can't get two days. You see what I'm saying? That foolishness right there are, are, are being celebrated by we who call ourselves Christians. And I mm-hmm. and I said on my post today, mm-hmm. God is spitting us out of out of His mouth mm-hmm. because like that we look warm, and you can't defend like, foolishness like continuous. Green tea with no sugar. Yeah, it's just it's just ridiculous. So this thing here about the uh, um, not allowing to work, I was not allowed to work. As much as much as we struggle at home financially, when a great job came along, she told me, "No, you can't." Oh yeah, uh-huh. gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's abuse on so many levels. Oh man, I'm telling you, I'm well, gonna go he there. He can't make his money. That's mm-hmm. just like emasculating. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and and I was afraid of the ramifications that would come after if I defiled it. And here I am, the uh, the bread, not so much the breadwinner. I was the I'm the head of the house. Okay, you would have been breadwinning. I would have been because it was a great job. I mean, I, I they was gonna start me off at forty, mm. start. Okay, and I know that's not n- no money for some of you who are making eighty, <laughs> but I said. But we're talking years ago. But how can you go from making nothing to forty? That's a blessing. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what you're uh, and uh, I was stunted. Um, here's the other one. All the opportunities in the networks that could have been developed as a result a whole, of it, which could have been opportunities for mm-hmm, her as mm-hmm, well. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I'm telling y'all. It's something else. This one here says tries to control you, to control how you spend money, uh, where you go or what you wear. Yeah. 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 I agree with that. You can't wear that outside. Yeah, you can't wear that. 
Yeah. You used to wear it, but you can't wear it now because you, you don't need to. Because uh-uh. you wore that to get my attention. You see what I'm saying? Now you got my now attention. You, you now can't you wear it. Why are you wearing that particular mm-hmm. tie right there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, I've oh, been there. Where you get that tie from? I didn't mm-hmm. see that. Who bought that mm-hmm. for you? Because mm-hmm. I know your taste. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. I can't change. I can't be adventurous. Right. Exactly. No, you got my business. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, act jealous or possessive or constantly accusing you of being unfaithful. Oh, yeah. That's, that was number one right there. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Constantly, which means some men go out and become unfaithful because you constantly. You speak it. You speaking it. Yep. Yep. Constantly. Um, this one here says gets angry when drinking. Well, this says drinking alcohol or using drugs, but uh, duh. <laughs> uh, threatens you with uh, violence or a weapon. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. If she ain't cooking with that skillet, what she got in her hand for? Uh, come on now. Y'all, y'all need to learn from the you brothers. You don't pick up skillets. You don't cook. I cook. What, what, what you going to do with that? What you, why you got grease? Wait, hold on. <laughs> See, look at you. I'm out the door. Do you think Al Green uh, eat grits still today? No, he's oatmeal now. Oatmeal. He's oatmeal now? He's, he's, oatmeal. Eating. he's instant oatmeal with <laughs> the microwave. <laughs> he ain't giving it time to get hot. No, nah, sir. Nah. No, sir. No, sir. Uh, let's see. It says uh, hits, kicks, shoves, slaps, chokes. Or otherwise hurt you, your children, or your pets. Oh, wait, wait, wait. The, no, you better not touch my dog. Yeah, that, that's a no-no. Don't, don't, don't. Yeah, you can do anything you want to with me, but don't mess with my dog. I know she female. But mm-hmm. then, uh, mm-hmm. You can call her that name mm-hmm. if you want to. Right. That's a scientific term. Sure. But you cannot touch her. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> right. We're right. kicking my dog. That's um, my bit. That, okay. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Forces you to have, for, well, we talked about this, forces you to have sex or engage in sexual acts. Against your will. And some women out there say, huh, men don't want to yeah, have sex? when they get them rubber bands. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or then they want to tie you up. Because women can't go there. They can be very freaky. Which is okay with the man when y'all are, when it's consensual. unified, consensual. Um, but then again, it's double standard. Yeah, it's double standard. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because there, there's some men who want certain things done with, to him in his bed with his wife. And she think mm, I can't do it. I can't do it. And then she she turns around and does it. Yeah. And so I think there used to be there needs to be an agreement. Yeah, because you waking me up at three a.m. talking about the batteries out. Get up, go get me some batteries. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> leave me alone. <laughs> I'm not going there. I told y'all I wasn't gonna go there with you. You started this. Nope. And you finishing it? Oh no. Right. We're gonna miss that. Uh, we'll we'll teach the new guy. <laughs> hey, we're going to a break here. I think uh, we can segue into Andre Crouch with this because there's a no, no other person I can think of who could take me out of this and bring me into my senses. Take me back. Oh, Lord. Yeah, yeah. Uh, from, from the first place where I belonged. <laughs> I need to go back. Yeah, the cradle. Yeah. We'll be back, y'all. Sir Walter Jones Show. Yeah. 
Take me back, Andre Crouch. It is a standard. It is a, it is a song that, uh, my goodness, um, all across all racial barriers. You know, there is a human race. That's really about it. Yeah. Okay. But we use race a lot because it uh, so we can kind of get an understanding of what color scheme we're talking about, depending on the crayon box that you have. Uh. Uh-huh. And, Pico Brown, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Peach Brown, sorry. Yeah, right, right. And of course, we know that uh, there's a situation with the flag in South Carolina that they've been talking about all day long. <laughs> and um, I will have to do a show around it because that's a Five Side Friday. That's a Five Side Friday, yeah, because it's it it really is something that we need to talk about. Um, but this other thing says forces you to have sex or engage in sexual acts against your will. I got that one. The next one is blames you for his or her violent behavior. If you didn't do this, I wouldn't make me do that. Yeah. Nothing makes you come within a person's personal space and violate it both audibly or physically. Yeah. It's a choice. Unless you Now, it's one thing self-defense, but self-offense is totally different. Self-offense, yeah. Uh-uh, you can't use me, you know. I don't care how much the person talks to edge you on. Mm-hmm. You can still walk away. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You can walk away, but... Those in this don't. It's like a telling a drug addict you can walk away. And there's some women who are in very violent situations. They cannot. Well, we ain't walk talking away. about women. We are talking about men now. Yeah, yeah. But I think, okay. but we can't separate it though, because I think, I, I, again, I think there's some men in situations where they just can't up and walk away. Right then, they need. What they I need mean by walk away and help. is walk away from being hit. I'm mm-hmm. not talking about walking. Okay, away from the, the hitting. Okay, the the relationship is hard to walk away from because. Mm-hmm. It's that mysterious Your mic mystic went down. tie. You told him to turn me down. Yeah, he turned you down. Yeah, yeah okay. I don't know what's wrong with this boy. <laughs> Come on, man. Get this gap now. <laughs> okay, go ahead. And he ain't been harassed by me yet, so that's why. <laughs> <laughs> ain't been up there with Chris Bates being harassed by Chris. I don't know, Chris. <laughs> I just pray the doctor's okay. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, you cut me wrong. You know I'm going to get above this table. Yep, man. yep, yep. So we be praying for Chris Basil. Jonathan, dog. no. He know. We be praying for Chris Basil. Yeah, yeah we miss him. Yeah. Um, going to flush his, his veins out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Get all that crud and everything out. Now back to the situation of sure. abuse. Sure. Um, no, the, the, the mystic ties of emotion Bind you beyond reason at times. It's like Mudbone said, I'm in love with a woman I can't stand and I don't know why. Mm-hmm. You know, it's baffling. And I don't think science has yet to come up with it. Beyond pheromones and hormones, sure. um, walking away from a relationship is totally different than walking away from a punch. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's so true. To be honest with you, the punch could be fatal. Mm-hmm. But the emotional pain 
lingers far longer. That is true. So one could be much worse. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and we alluded to that earlier about how uh, people who are molested or raped or attacked, um, they live that life for many years and they're acting out on that by becoming a certain person or characteristics, meaning they become gay or they become promiscuous, they become prostitutes, they become abusers themselves. Um, so this says, uh, blames you for, for his or her violent behavior or tells you that you deserve it, basically. And they do it in a way to make you believe that you do deserve it. And that's abuse in itself. Mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. deserve to be mistreated. You deserve it, yeah. Uh, this one here says if you're, if you're gay, bisexual, transgender, you might also be experiencing domestic violence if you're in a relationship with someone who threatens to tell friends, family, colleagues, or community members your sexual orientation or gender identity. All right. I don't care if you disagree with a person's sexual uh, preference. Uh, you still should be careful because many of them commit suicide because of that. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. they're really looking for love. They are. They really are. It's one thing to to scratch a physical itch. Yeah. But it's a lot of time it's the love that they think they're receiving from whomever's administering it mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. the mistake of it. Yeah. So they will commit suicide because of the lack of feeling loved. Yeah, absolutely. Or what their definition of love is. Yeah. You have to be careful. They have one here called children and uh, children and abuse. Domestic violence affects children. Oh yes, it does. Uh, Even if they are just witnesses. Oh God, I'm a witness. Yeah. Oh yeah, me too. I've seen it. If Uh, if you have children, remember that uh, exposure or domestic violence put them at risk. Uh, of developmental problems, either being a, be a repeat offender, a copycat, or becoming closeted and not trusting people. Closet? You mean the children? Yeah, <clears throat> absolutely. Yeah, because they repeat it. With, uh, for instance, if a daughter sees it, then she becomes uh, she finds a man who's just like either the victim or the victim, as a word, the abuser. Of this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. absolutely. It's a it's a Gen- generational type, you yeah. know, um, it becomes somewhat of a uh, internal family cultural mm-hmm, piece. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We family, we kick. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Um, <laughs> so by uh, domestic violence puts them in the risk, developmental problems, uh, psychiatric disorders. Yeah. They pro- don't understand what a true family. That setup is. right. They, they don't know what's normal because they think that's normal. Uh, problems at home, aggressive behavior and low self-esteem. Uh, you might worry that seeking help could further endanger you and your children or that it might break up the family. Uh, fathers might fear that abusive partners will try to take their children away from them. I've seen this happen a lot. Mm-hmm. However, getting help is the best way to protect your children and yourself. Uh, and again, these are not weak men. Uh, the, I think that the average abuse to men comes to a man who is trying not to abuse back he wants to be a loving man he wants to be caring he wants to be the head of the house but uh, he wants to make sure that she's okay provide for her but if she's abusive he can't strike back so he instead of striking back he tries to submit or try to get get along with her so that because uh, some men he's afraid that if he start hitting her Number one, he might like it, <laughs> but number two, <laughs> he may he may hit her, and then it may make him feel like a monster. So men take that stuff in their homes. Again, I've been there. I took it for a while because I wanted to show the love of God. First of all, I wanted to continue to remain humble in my house, uh, and and try to sit back and wonder what's wrong with her. There's some, something's wrong with her psychologically, and how do I tell somebody? You know, and I, again, I'm a victim of some of these things you're saying. They're saying men don't know how to tell it because if they tell it. So much pride at stake. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So much. And then the feeling of being vulnerable. Yeah. Number two, because you tell somebody, everybody going to tell it. Mm-hmm. Number three, um, it's strange. You've been trained all your life. Don't hit girls. Don't yep. hit girls. Yeah. And then number four, if you hit her back, you got to keep hitting the back because she's going to come back strong. She- and some women uh, enjoy the abuse. They enjoy the abuse. There are women who, like we talked about sadism and what have you, 
happen. There are women who've been abused. For, those are signs too of an abuse. Pain of pleasure that come. Yeah, the pleasure the pain. Of pain. Of, yep. the pleasure pain because she get in your face. Hit me. Hit me. Hit me. She wants you to hit her because she want to get struck by him because that's a part of the. Uh, uh, some of it's the pleasure. Other is the. And it's above my pay grade, but it's a psychological thing that needs to happen. Neurological, yeah, uh, yeah, release or something. Yeah, so there's some kind of dopamine that something has to go set off in her. <laughs> dopamine, for yeah, <laughs> and then I mm-hmm. mean, and then some men I feel that they're they're henpecked. They'll be called a henpecked man, so that's why they don't want to tell how the abuse is happening in the home. This is saying here, break the cycle. If you're in a if you're in an abusive situation, you might recognize this pattern. Uh, number one, your your abuser threatens violence. Uh, your abuser strikes you. Your abuser apologizes, promises to change, and offers gifts. Uh, the cycle repeats itself. Uh, and you probably look at the one that says offer gifts. You probably say, well, that's what that happens with women who abuse. The man offers the gifts after abuse. I know. Again, this is about men today. And men, they do receive gifts from the abuser. Uh, to appease him to say I'm sorry because sometimes they go into a remorse at that moment but then it's coming back and the only thing that can help them is uh, some uh, counseling some psychiatric help and of course God's going to have to help them some some prayer and fasting and uh, and it, it's really bad so typically the violence becomes more frequent and s- severe over time domestic violence can leave you depressed and, and anxious you might be more likely to abuse alcohol or drugs or engage in unprotected sex. Uh, because men are traditionally thought to be physically stronger than women, you might be less likely to report domestic violence in your heterosexual relationship due to embarrassment. Mm. Mm-hmm. You might also worry that the significance of the abuse will be minimized because you're a man. That's true. Because like, when I was telling my story, they were like, I don't believe you. That can't be happening in your house. Come on, Walt, please. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. Uh, similarly, a man being abused by another man might be reluctant to talk about the problem because of how it reflects on his masculinity or because it exposes his sexual orientation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you seek help, you you might also confront a shortage of re- resources for male victims of domestic violence. Healthcare providers in other contexts might not think to ask if your injuries were caused by domestic violence, making it harder to open up about abuse you might fear that if you talk to someone about the abuse you'll be accused of wrongdoing yourself remember though if you're being abused you aren't to be blamed uh, and help is available start by telling someone about the abuse whether it's a friend relative health care provider or other contact at first you might find it hard to talk about the abuse however you'll also likely uh, feel relieved and receive much needed support. Now we're talking about men getting abused. Yeah. Now abuse is derived out of discipline, allegedly, right? Evidently, you did something wrong or something they didn't like, and so now they have to discipline you. It's abuse in the onset when the woman thinks she can discipline the head of household. It is abuse in itself, right? And that's, that's out of that's out of order and out of control. Mm-hmm. When your man ain't acting right, you need to have a relationship with the man so the man can mm-hmm. discipline the man. Because a mm-hmm. real man is not going to take; he's not going to be led by nobody but another man. True. Um, so there's another problem in line with that woman when she thinks she can check that man or lead that man. Soon as the she only realized. woman that has ever been truly successful in governing or leading a man is his mama or maternal caregiver like grandma, auntie, whoever took that place coming up. You're right. So then the woman gets frustrated because she may have a mothering spirit or played that mothering role most of her life mm-hmm. and thinks she could do that with a man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then he rebels and now we got problems. You whooped your little brother. You whooped your brothers. You whooped your cousins. Whoever you babysat, you mm-hmm. whooped them. You whooped so them. now you want to whoop your man? Yeah. You got problems. <laughs> but when he take it, that's another problem. Yeah, when he take it. Yeah. Because even if he doesn't hit back, he mm-hmm. can reaffirm, listen, this is not going to happen. Right. It yeah. can't happen. can't happen. Because then if he a punk, and I'm not saying he is for not responding physically. Sure. He got to be wise in how he'll voice that again. Right. Now, walking on eggshells. That's a right. Yeah. Because yeah. I can't be free to be mean. I can't be free to make a mistake. Right. I can't be free to 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 be free. Right. Because I'm with you. Right. That's crazy. Yeah. That, right. And it, it again, 
it if it seems and it's deep chaotic from the outside especially it seems absolutely ridiculous you're like what kind of world y'all living in but i tell you boy when you get up in that world you'd be like oh i see how this can happen because again usually the man is not he's trying to keep peace in his home yeah because he got hell everywhere else. he's got hell everywhere and he calls so, home what solomon say go on the house mm-hmm. go on the rooftop. yeah go on the rooftop he's i'd rather dwell on the rooftop than dwell in the house with a contentious woman now uh, she can hit you from down mm-hmm. there mm-hmm Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you got hands alone, or better yet, got aimed that good. Yeah, man, you you, you need to move off the block, <laughs> right? <laughs> or, or go to sleep in the uh, the uh, chimney stack. Move in a condo. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I was not. Let's go to Facebook. See what they're saying. Yeah, they was uh, I was not. Says it's a real issue uh, that's con- uh, constantly ignored. Yet the psychological effect is what's most damaging. Physical wounds will heal, but the mind is where the biggest damage occurs. This is true. Um, Bernie Scott says that this is not news worth uh, because society feels that women are more important. Uh, it's happening to men more than women. It was happening in the 90s. All right. So she, she's right. It is a, it is a, you, we ain't talking about it, but they're like, they don't take it serious because it's men being abused. Uh, so many times you've seen women get abused. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Ebony Ward, uh, this is real. Men get abused also. I am an advocate of domestic uh, violence. Uh, it goes both ways. George Turner says domestic happens uh, to more to let's say, to more Christians. Oh, well, to Christians also. Let's just say it that way. But some preachers encourage women to to stay. Well, that's there. Now, I'm going to go there. She says some calls women to stay in an abusive relationship. This is a very delicate subject in the church. What do you say to the family when a child has been killed or the wife and the children? Uh, 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 I, I've talked about this on the show a few times where the abuse happened and then you go to the pastor and the pastor says, sends the person back home to the abuser saying forgive and kind of work with them. And, and that's really tomorrow's show more so. Because I'll be honest with you. I've always had this view because I mm-hmm. grew up with it. Mm-hmm. My mother had seven brothers mm-hmm. before they fell off. Yeah. And my father was so charming that they didn't believe her at first because she was that sister, that strong sister who raised them, you know. Sure. She whooped them. So they like, and then they've probably seen them fight back and forth. But after a while, she got tired of the fighting. Wow. When I came along, which they had been married over 20 years by that time, because I was a oops baby. Mm-hmm. Um, my, my mindset was when a boy fights my sister my big brother goes to her aid Mm -hmm. why ain't none of your brothers come to your aid Mm. and i asked him one of my uncles he said we talked to our mother about it and she was like stay out of it Mm. which i can understand to some degree i said but that's your sister he was beating her then the other was like we didn't believe it because he was so cool wow he was so cool i said man he was wearing my mama out. Wow. So much so, I, as a, I remember as a five, six-year-old, I jumped on his back to stop him. I was saying, Daddy, stop. Daddy, stop. And he threw me off of him. But him throwing me off gave her time to, you know, to get away. Mm-hmm. And she snatched me up and we left. As a pastor, now I'm getting somewhere. When a woman comes to the church and says she's being abused, it's his response is his responsibility as a shepherd right to at least have some brethren along with police to go investigate that absolutely I agree knock on the door mm-hmm. brother you whether you're a member or not mm-hmm. she's a member of our church mm-hmm. and we are concerned about her and uh you need to know we're concerned about her mm-hmm. right and you need to know that we're gonna come to her aid yeah and if you're in trouble we come to your aid right in other words, we need to develop a ride down there dot com ministry for church. <laughs> That's true. I'm sorry. There's no yeah. way a church with men and the sisters come there if they need a flat tire. They come there if they need some pipes fixed in their house. They mm-hmm. come there if they need help to feed the family. Mm-hmm. How come they get can't get no help from the brother? Yeah. When or you well, we don't want the sisters to help because that perpetuates the abuse thing because then they start beating the demons <laughs> up. But <laughs> but I'm serious. That yeah. We have let parishioners down in so many levels in so many areas because we'll say it's not our business right you may not have to do anything but sometimes mm. the presence or knowing the possibility mm-hmm. and I told my uncle I said 
my dad did not believe in the presence of his brother-in-laws. Mm. That's why he was felt free to do what he did to his wife. Mm. Wow. That's deep. I bet won't no man mess with your sister. Oh, no, 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 no. He's got to go through, let's see, Michael, Rodney, Larry, me, Dwayne, David, Justin. Bobby. Yeah. <laughs> Ricky Mike, and Mike. Mike Tito, <laughs> Jermaine. And one day, Randy. yeah, and I told this story before, one guy, my, my sister Janina came home with a black eye. Whew. Yeah. And, and daddy got up? Daddy was the first one to get up. I know he was. He was the first one. Daughter. Yep. That's the first one that got up. Uh, I was just, I was visiting at that time. So she came home at the right time because I was home. My brother Rodney was home. My dad, my uh, my brother, uh, let's see. I think, it, I don't think Larry was there because if Larry was there. He's a, he's the hot fuse. Yeah. The, the whole Albany street would have been on fire still to this day. Okay. It would have been like Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah, because I can see him <laughs> getting up immediately <laughs> and grabbing him. You know what I'm trying to say, yeah. man? Yeah. Grabbing him by his earlobes yeah. and wrapping them in around and so touching the other. <laughs> and then holding his nose while he simultaneously punches him in the right and left it, jaw. It's like you know, Larry. Yeah, I've met him before. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's him. I've met him before. That's him. He he would have taken care of it right away. He was a legend at so, Bightler School. I talked yeah, about yeah. him. I asked about him. Oh yeah, but yeah, yeah. I went to There's quite a few Bible people that was at funerals oh, at that. Oh really? Yeah. Okay, okay. I just remember talk- thirty four to be fourteen. Yeah, that's true. All right. Yeah. I was, Back down memory exactly. lane. Exactly. I was five. I was five years old when I went to Bible. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, they they tried. Okay, and we took care of the brother. What y'all do? Okay, t- off the air you could tell. Yeah, I'll tell you off the air because I again I still don't know if the doctor successfully removed. My dad's foot out of his. Okay. So uh, Joseph um, H. Lewis, <laughs> my dad walks with a limp to this day because he's, he's he's missing his shoe. <laughs> he, he, oh man, he put the big heel shoe he's in miss, there. He's missing. He's missing the shoe. <laughs> he's shoeless. Dad, you clueless? No, he's shoeless. Uh, <laughs> so Joseph H. L, uh, I'm sorry, J- Joseph, I was about to say Joseph H. Smith. And they did a carpet place? Yeah, some, Joseph something. A. Bank. Oh, there you go. Okay. Joseph Lewis, a, a great uh, man of God, says, I remember the first time I saw a man get chased down the street by a woman. He said, sad chick with a knife. Back then I thought it was funny, but I sure wouldn't want it. LaShonda Lewis, that's his wife, are chasing me. <laughs> that's why I don't have side chicks. <laughs> My man, I don't blame you because uh, she, she anyway, they both was on the show. She might be quiet. Who? But a uh, huh? LaShonda and, and Joseph, they was on the show. She released that new project she got. Great. Yeah, free. Oh, I was absent. Yeah, you, you, that's right. You were not here today. Um, Let's see. Who else got here? Uh, Michelle Thomas just says that Mike's brother-in-law was a victim of uh, Michelle Thomas. Mm-hmm. She's mm-hmm. abusive. <laughs> yeah. You see the post she be putting yeah. on Facebook. She, about she, abuse, her she abuses her. Yeah, she abuses that for <laughs> Paul Miller. No, we call it Facebook abuse. Facebook abuse, right? <laughs> no, social media, social media abuse. No, we gotta come up with a better word for abuse. <laughs> social media assault. Yeah. Right, right. And he be taking it too, boy. Oh God, they they hilarious. I love that couple. But uh, Buddy Gill says uh, society's mentality would have it that men are laughed at when they are the victim of domestic abuse. How then can they cry out for help? And that's what we've been saying. Uh, that's exactly it. Abronin uh, says, Buddy, it's because of that reason that men don't cry out for help. However, there are men who feel if they do cry out for help, they will be looked down upon as, as a sap. And see, that's so true. But we got to just accept the fact that we've been abused and accept the abuse that's going to come from my brother, but just know that the brother going to come to your aid. Because yeah. if, if I came to you and told you that I was a victim of abuse, you're going to laugh in my face. Yep. I know you are. Yep. You're going to ask, what did I do? Yep. And how come I didn't do something different? Mm-hmm. And then because of the man you are, you're going to say, okay, this is how we're going to fix this. Exactly. Exactly. And then you're going to be laughing all the while. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then 10 years, five years, mm-hmm. six months later, mm-hmm. hey, y'all wonder why he walked so funny? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, no. That's how men do, though. No, we do. And mm-hmm. honest to God, a man can get beat up by another man. Yeah. 
or if he gets jumped, yeah, he's gonna come to his aid. But then he's uh-huh. gonna tease him in the locker room about it. Later. Oh, he's gonna do it regardless. Uh, and, and that's the one level of being assaulted and teased you yep. can't deal with. You got beat by a girl. Can't deal with that part, right? And uh, that's one. That's why I'm very transparent. Is, is I, I don't like lying on the air. Okay, I might, <laughs> I might lie to myself off the air, but I don't like lying on the air. And people, yeah. we got too many people with discerning of spirits all though, who listening. They know he, he lied. Yeah. Uh, and and that's why I agree with you when you said I'm gonna teach you. Because men, we do do that, and yeah. we 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 are victims ourselves, victimizing other brothers in a way. But the end result is okay. We're done laughing. I'm like, how can I help you? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, and you're right about that. The brothers do that. But that's one area we can accept it, man. I know they're gonna rag me on this they one. Rag me. But when it come to getting whooped by your woman, it's can't, you ain't willing to do that. But if a man really wants help, he needs help bad. He will go through the rag. So that he can get the help, he said, "You know they're gonna tease me, but I'm gonna go through it because I gotta get out of this mess." You know what I'm saying? Because he 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 does all this stuff to get up and it, other other things. Yeah, he, he goes through mess to go get a house and you yeah. know and in the car and all these other things and a job and yeah. But that red tape, who that red tape is a mess, ain't it? Mm, that red tape is tolerable. Uh-huh. But when that's that's white red bandages, that's something different. That is something different, ain't it? But if he really wanted, he'll do it. Well, I ain't met a brother who's admit to it yet. Oh, uh, being abused? Except you. Right. Yeah. And I'm going to talk about you later. I know you are. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm putting myself out there with my 20,000 listeners. You know what I'm saying? Right. They're they going to rat me. But, and that's fine. Uh, and, and again, like I said earlier, they're going to try to figure out who, which woman is it because like, like they know all of my exes. Oh, I know which one it is. Mm-hmm. There's that one that was six feet tall. Six feet tall. <laughs> Who wore them heels you like so <laughs> With the deep <laughs> voice. <laughs> Walter, come here. Walt. Yeah, Walt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And and, and then after the break, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go in, in, into more detail about that. Um, because there's two. One, I was dating. Uh, it was a whew, years relationship. And I wonder how, why am I still in this relationship? But I realized it was mental. Mm. And some of it. I believe a lot of it is spiritual because there's there's some witchcraft going on in the relationship. I really believe it's spiritual mm-hmm. more than anything else. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of witchcraft is a, a manifestation. Ooh, yes, of, of, of a demonic attack. Yep, yep. You're going through that Jezebelian um, uh, tunnel, and it's hard to come out of that. Yes, I think it's a combination of Jezebel and Ahab. Mm-hmm. The, the victim is Ahab, mm-hmm. and the mm-hmm. abuser is Jezebel. Absolutely, whether yeah. it's male or female. Yep. And let's talk about those those two persons when okay. we come out the break. Okay. Okay. You preach that message. We're going to Smallwood. Uh, he got a song called "I've See, Come yeah, Too Far." Say that. That's the reason it gets me too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She beat me because yeah. I got Smallwood. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> I've come too far. <laughs> to turn back now, Richard Smallwood. I'll be back, y'all. So all the Jones show. Sure.
the great Richard Smallwood. Um, man, you can't go wrong with the uh, man. I, and I picked a calm song because <laughs> I, I didn't pick the one that uh, could have uh, taken us to the stratosphere, wherever that place is. You know where that place is? Stratosphere is in somewhere in town, Las Vegas. Oh yeah, yes, yeah, over there. Let me go tall hotel. Down mm-mm, here. Mm-mm, that's the hemisphere. No, that's her sphere, but uh, the stratosphere is at the no. end of the strip. The oh. Herman's sphere is at the other Herman's end of the strip. Sphere. Herman? Yeah, Herman's strip club. That's Maryland's, uh, that, well, husband, ain't it? I ain't Maryland. with that. Okay. I heard he was a victim of abuse. He, was <laughs> he sure was. <laughs> he was sure was a victim. Um, <laughs> the the Jezebel and that old henpecked husband of hers. ooh chicken yeah okay tell us is is can you relate that story to what we're talking about here as far as domestic abuse i can actually relate several instances in scripture mm-hmm. where it was the case mm-hmm. herodias okay herodias she asked for the head of john the baptist because the king made a promise and said whatever you want up to your f- half of my kingdom and the mother told the daughter to ask for the head of john the baptist mm-hmm. he knew why? Who was asking for that and why? Right, right. And he could have said, I'm the king. I ain't being that silly. You know what I'm saying? But he, I got to keep my word. You can break down for your daughter. That's the same spirit. Yeah, that's true. It's the same spirit. Yeah. He, he was weak at that moment, whether it was temporary Ahabitis or what you want to <laughs> call it. You know? Now, <clears throat> you got the queen of, the yeah, queen of Israel. They weren't mm-hmm. Judah. They were Israel at the time. It was a split kingdom. Mm-hmm. Um Basically, who ran the kingdom from the the, the submissive seat? Right. So she was an authoritative submissive. Is that right. the case? Yeah. It couldn't be enacted until the king acted upon it. But <laughs> I guess we call that today pillow talk. Pillow talk. That is true. Um, how many? <laughs> how many men do whatever the wife say just so they won't have to heal her mouth uh, or deal with? the abuse because sometimes that mouth is more painful than that fist yes yes you can talk longer than you can punch wow <laughs> that is true <laughs> but that is that is so true i remember i don't know if you did, was here when we did the uh racism show black against white and my brother larry was talking about oh yeah he mm-hmm. worked uh, the it, cops who were yeah very aggressive on the street but very passive at home yeah and i and i i've seen that where there was a, a a strong head, whether he was a politician, a a, a man of, uh, who wore blue, whether it's the cop or fireman, what have you, uh, or a pastor, and then he's very tough and, and and straightforward in the pulpit or on the street arresting folk and abusing, but then at home, he is shrunk to a piece of bread. Yeah, by both his wife and, and his he children. Better be strong in public because she'll get him in private. She, yeah, sure will. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's, it's, and, and again, it makes you think about the, the, uh, the Ahab and uh, Jezebel story. Yes. Why is that even allowed? Okay. For somebody to be that strong, but at home, he's nothing. You got all the authority in the world and mm-hmm. none at home. And at home. And the wonder is that's why he choose or he's so authoritative in the street because mm-hmm. yes, that is the only place where he, he feels like himself, he, himself. And he worked double shifts, uh-huh. triple yeah. shifts. Yeah. When he come home, he's so exhausted because mm-hmm. 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 he just don't want to deal with it. Absolutely. And 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 and, and that, that was my case. I didn't want to come home after whether it was ministry, whether it was church, or whether it was somewhere else, because I was I had to come home to be the submissive man mm-hmm. in my house. Okay, because I did not want to strike her. I didn't want to yell and scream at her because I didn't want some peace. But when I was left the house, I felt more freedom in the back alley <laughs> than I did in my house. Now, ain't that a shame? Yeah, that's a shame. And that's that. Those are signs. Again, you men out there, those are signs of mental abuse uh, that you can't talk about unless you're talking to your close friends. And then sometimes close friends don't don't believe you because, like, you're that strong guy. That that ain't happening at home, man. You just you. You'd you, be surprised. You'd be so surprised. And many times when the victim of domestic abuse, <clears throat> I remember a case. I knew a guy. He called the police mm. and they was arresting him. Ain't that something? Because they couldn't, they didn't believe it. Yep. Yeah. It wasn't until as they were arresting him and they saw how calm he was the entire time that she couldn't take it no more. And she 
her rage caused her to reach out and, and hit him while he was restrained. Mm. <laughs> wow. I was like, man, he said, I took one for the team, though, because when yeah. she hit me, that's yeah. all they need to see. That's all they need I to said, see. I need to press charges. Wow. <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's something else. The, um, <clears throat> I remember dating uh, and walking into the park with her, okay? It was a church picnic. I'll never forget it. This is when people started realizing that I was being abused, okay? Walking into a church picnic and everybody's standing around, everybody having a great time, and I'm high-fiving everybody, but I did not recognize her, okay? Uh, and she pulled me into a corner. Y'all came there together? Yeah. And you didn't recognize her? I didn't. I didn't. I, I mean, I didn't acknowledge her. Acknowledge her. But she knew you were with you. Y'all were together. I'm I mean, telling you. What a you, problem. You look at them. I mean, come on, man. You look at the mentality of the abuser, though. You have to look into that mind. And you have to do, I guess you got to go to the psychology show on Wednesday at 12 o'clock. Shameless plug. Shameless plug. Uh, uh, but uh, so um, she pulled me violently to the corner. And, and and all the people could see that finger in my face, finger, finger in my face and her screaming, okay? Now, I'm looking around seeing if anybody was looking, okay? I, it didn't seem like anybody was looking. Yeah, they were. Until after that evening when my phone was ringing. Walter, you let that girl do that to you. Oh, I'm open like that. Wait. I'm like, what are you talking about? She totally embarrassed you. She treats you like a little boy. And you let that happen. Why you let that stuff happen? So I'm putting on my man pants, you know. No, no, I, you know, I just let her vent. She just need to vent. I just let her, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yet I stayed in that kind of relationship for year after year after year. But here's the problem. How could you have handled that mm -hmm. at that moment? Because yeah, that's my point. You couldn't have unless it was it become privately. A, yep. Because it would have became a scene. It would have became time. a scene. Absolutely. So mm -hmm. being passive was wise then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you had to be a boxer, right. so to speak, and not a fighter. Yep. Yeah, yeah, and this these are how how these fights do come out because the woman tests that man. Yes, and then bam, once she, once she hits him, and you see these crazy videos that these young people are putting on. Oh my on, God, girl after girl, after girl, boy after boy. Yeah, and, and then the once that rage comes out, he hits her, and now it's like. Which, as a teacher, has two problems. I saw yeah, because yeah. she should never have ever been able to assault him mm -hmm. ever. Right, but. Because they know or believe that the young man is of such good character mm -hmm. that he won't do anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now you want to intervene after mm -hmm. he does because he's been chided and bought, you know, lured into this. Yes. So that's another issue, which young ladies, I don't care if you can whoop him. Right. Don't push him to fight you. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and she's being urged a lot of times by her, her, her friends to do it. And then, and then it's what you just said about the mentality of the young man. Cause she know she tests him, then she realized, oh, he ain't gonna hit me because he's being passive. You're like, stop, stop, stop. He yeah. keeps saying, stop, don't go do on, it, girl. You better go. go on. On. You better go. On. They don't do it to thugs. Yeah. Mm -mm. No, no, no. They won't do it to someone that they know is abusive. Okay. And then once he strikes, that's it. It's like pushing the cat in the corner. That cat's gonna. You gonna have some marks. Oh yeah. On your face. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> you gonna get scratched. You hear yes, me? Yes, you are. I play with my uh, my dog at home, Iris, my dog Iris. Now, she still got her fingernails, okay, long. She got teeth, okay? And when I play with Iris, I put her up, up against the corner. And uh, when she wants to get out of that corner, she, she lets me up. know. You can't hide. You, you can't hide. <laughs> and I got the scratches. To, to <laughs> I'm telling you, I got scratches to prove that I play with my dog at home. Okay, uh, I was not sense. Um, she says, but if, if you're paying close attention to the wife and those children, you will see the abuse in their actions or the lack thereof, especially if they're in a, in a leadership position. Indecisive uh, is a clue. Uh, she says, obviously, at the, uh, and then I lost where I was. Let's go back there. Obviously, at the time, you were not listening to Gladys. Oh, <laughs> Gladys Knight, if I were your woman. <laughs> I should be playing that right now. If Dion was here, we'd be playing that song right now. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I'm gonna be. I'm a, I got present company. I got. I got to act like a. I got to act like a man. Yeah. Think, don't be and think like a man. <laughs> act like a man. Think like a man. Yeah. Um. This one here. This article is from shrinkformen.com. Uh, in his own words, abused men who suffer in silence. Uh, 
it's it's let's see. It says it's day fifteen, domestic violence awareness month. Uh and this is um it says Alan shares his story of abuse by his borderline personality disordered ex wife and the family court. He says, I've suffered in silence. Doctor T, I am writing this down for you because I I can't remain silent and be able to move on from the hell that was my engagement in marriage. I met my now ex-wife in 2011. We got together and dated for about six months before we got engaged. The wedding took place almost a year later. We had our fights and stuff, but it got really bad before the wedding. I was about to leave and she used her family to bully me into going through with the, with the marriage. Okay. Use her family to, to, all right. These are a lot of shotgun yeah. Uh, yeah. weddings out oh, there. Yeah. Believe it or not. Against the at, Against the advice of family and friends, I went through with it. Things were okay for about three months. After that, it all went complete to hell. Uh, let me pause here because there are a lot of women who, in the, in their own special way, force men to marry them. Yeah. And you probably said, you can't force a man to marry you. Yeah, you can. Yes, you can. Especially if you're the daughter of Tony Soprano. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Especially. Yeah. Hey, I understand. You uh, you made my daughter happy. <laughs> right. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? You made her happy. Now you got to make her happy. <laughs> yeah, right. You're going to exactly. legitimize her. There you go. Uh, so <laughs> she manipulates, in a sense, uh, him. To make him feel like, okay, if I don't marry her, then yada, 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 yada. Get married or you die. Mm-hmm. Or he makes, she makes him feel like it's it's going to be great. Okay. She, yeah. she makes him feel like you're going to be the best man. She begins to pump him up and lift him up to a, to a higher plateau until they get married and then her true colors come out. Uh, and then it's too late now. Right. Yeah, you're, you're stuck. So you're so stuck. stuck. Yeah, and then, then she begins to barrage him and beat him in the house mentally, um, maybe physically. You know, depends on how much he can take. But it says here, so she, um, uh, she would start arguments and go on yelling rampage while calling me every name in the book. Mm-hmm. She expected me to work full time and take care of the house. She wanted to take responsibility for getting the bills paid. The problem is she never took the time to pay the bills. Mm. Mm-hmm. She got her car repo, never dropped off rent, and never paid anything else. It was all my fault, according to her. I worked over 80 hours a week, and I was never home and neglected. Uh, when I had days off, she would say, you're not making enough money. I got I got to a point where I would ignore her when she wanted to fight. She started physically assaulting me to force me to argue. I've seen this before. Yeah, She would punch me in the back repeatedly when I was trying to sleep. Uh, this went on for nine months. In that time, she got pregnant. Yes, my daughter is mine. <laughs> no, I didn't enjoy being with her intimately because it was all, always about her. And when she felt like I deserved it, she made me feel like a toy. Did you, did you hear that? <sighs> my heart goes out to him. Uh-huh. He says, I didn't enjoy it. No, he didn't enjoy it. And okay. she made him feel like a toy. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But he had to do it in order to appease her. Okay. And then she got pregnant. Now, and then what happens is after that happens, uh, worse things happen a lot of times when the child comes. Or the chemical reactions in the woman's body. Yes. Come along with pregnancy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Her outbursts and combativeness got worse during the pregnancy. Seen it. Uh, she arbitrarily decided that she was leaving one night and in hysterical rage, packed a bag and went uh, to walk down the street at 10 at night while she was nine months pregnant. After our daughter was born, she calmed down a bit, or so I thought. <laughs> in reality, she got even worse. Yeah. Um, I would come home to find our daughter lying on the floor in front of the TV. Uh, by my ex-wife's own admission, she would uh, let her lay there and scream for hours on end. I only had to pick our daughter up for five minutes, and she would go to sleep in my arms. I also had to pick my daughter up from uh, the bar where my ex decided to go drinking. The bar. Oh, yeah. Then the day came when I realized I couldn't save this marriage. So I came home from a five-day shift in the fields, the oil fields. I just wanted to sleep, and she wanted to argue and fight. She started pushing me around. I locked myself in the bathroom and slept on the floor to get away. I knew I couldn't call the police. They would have arrested me just because I'm a male. Okay, now this is the mentality of men. Yep. 
yeah, they figured the authority is going to come, and this is the place where I will be arrested. Not, no matter what happens, they, they will take her side. Uh, I remember. I remember. So where does that come from? What? Why? What causes a woman to be an abuser? It doesn't say he did anything wrong in right. this. What made her that way? Is it that she was a spoiled brat? Is it that she was a demanding child? I mean, what causes women to be abusive in the first place? Absolutely. And and, and I think the... the um, I mean, because I'm listening to this. He's everything a good a woman wants. He's a good yeah. man. He's a provider. Mm-hmm. He's patient. He, he He's even tender because if a baby falls asleep in a man's arm in five minutes, mm-hmm. that means he has some kind of nurturing essence or tender, attentiveness about him mm-hmm. that makes him a great guy. Absolutely. Uh, and I was going to say, um, I don't think every story is the same. No. Because we, well, I think we went through a plethora of uh, reasons why women the way they are with men. Yeah, from and being an authority, from, in yes. a, older sibling, sister, or yes. abuse themselves. Okay, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and so we don't know why she did what she did. I, 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 I self-diagnosed, diagnosed one of mine, um, because I, I realized she was bipolar. Okay. You shouldn't have been buying those poles. Yeah, that's just, just, just kept the poles away. Huh? Yeah. I realized she's bipolar. And you were skinny like a pole. <laughs> <laughs> bring it in now, bring it in. Uh, you are skinny. And and I had to realize this is this is um, this is mental. It's above my pay grade, first of all, definitely. Uh-huh. But yet I'm in this relationship with this person. And beneath your character. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now that's deep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's beneath your character. It is. And I know women who like, like mm-hmm. you said, they like the abuse. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. if you, I'm too much man for that. Yeah. 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 Uh, a guy like me will try to work with healing you. Okay, not you, Alan, but the woman. No, I know you're a rescuer. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Okay, so a rescuer. They, you know, how they say good guys finish last. Yeah. Okay, that that was me, and in, in many of my relationships, the good guy finished last because they were, they say that they said they would say, oh, he's a pushover in their own minds. He's a pushover because he's too meek and humble. Mm-hmm. All right, and they don't they what they do. Unfortunately, they mistake meek and humbleness with uh, they don't they can't define strength. They can identify strength mm-hmm. in the humility, mm-hmm. so they see it as weak Absolutely. and inability. Absolutely, in reality, yeah. he has the ability to restrain himself mm-hmm. from just mm-hmm. choking, the from life killing out. you. Right? Yes, and that is the fruit. If that same man was with you and someone attacked you, yes, you'd see all his strength. You see power. his strength. You see his strength. Absolutely, uh, and that is that is the fruit of the spirit. Okay, that that reigns in guys. Okay, like myself and others that I've seen. Just, okay, it reigns supreme. Unfortunately, because we've been barraged with what we see in media today and on Facebook and YouTube and and other relationships, we think that strength by man don't take anything on the first try. Okay, so he strikes on the first try. We think, oh man, that man he will protect me to the very end. Well, unfortunately, that man might be overly aggressive because he don't even have the patience just to wait for the to hear the whole matter. <laughs> As Solomon said, I've seen the abusive strong man run mm-hmm. in the face of adversity. I've seen it to his woman. I've seen it too. Oh, you can beat her, but you can't fight a real man. Yep. And, can't and do that, it. That's what really uh-huh. happens because uh-huh. they are really cowards. They are. Yeah. Abusers are cowards. They are very, very much cowards. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it, and it really is sad. Uh, okay. And so people at, would ask me, you know, why, why are you staying there so long? I, I went to counseling. Okay. We sat there and was sitting with a counselor and. Then came the tears from her side. Here it comes. That's uh, abuse. Yeah, that's it, manipulation. It, the, he, she was manipulating the counselor, and I said, and I sat there and I said to myself, "This is amazing theater." It all, I, I had everything but popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. I, I'm telling you, I should have asked the guy. You got, you got a microwave? Man, you got a microwave because this is amazing theater. Because she don't do this stuff, you know, and whatever anybody else but you. She's trying to, okay, she needs to Hey, man, I'm point. usually the one crying. You know what I'm saying? I, I need to cry. Right. <laughs> okay? And then, now watch this. This one I realized it was mental illness. Okay, she sat there for an hour session. I'm paying all this money for this guy. And then she'll cry and she'll weep and mourn. You cried when you saw okay. the bill. Yeah, I did. And then as soon as we walk out of the office, you know what happened to those tears? <laughs> dried right up. They immediately dried up. Not a tear dropped until the next time we saw that guy again. Just dried up. And she marched down the street like she was the king of the hill, went back home to the abuse. And I said, wow, now mm. this is amazing theater. Uh, and I realized this, I wasn't the only one. There no, were so many not. others out there who, but they handled it differently. Some allow her to go a little further. 
me, she realized she could only go so far because what her thing was, she was afraid of the God in me. Okay. Okay. So she was like, mm, because she saw things. She saw how people who tried to treat me wrong, God got them. Yeah. Okay. So she realized, okay, I can't, I can't go too far with this guy. I'm, I'm taking advantage of the grace I have of uh-huh. being his wife. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But I also realized it wasn't mm-hmm. grace. It was mercy. It was mercy. It was straight mercy. Yeah. Yeah. Because, because those who go after me, uh, unfortunately, they live very shaky lives. They really do, and I'm not trying to be bold and and boastful and what have you. Okay. And again, in God the sense takes I am, care of his own. but he does take care of his own. He says, "I give grace to the humble, mm-hmm. and I resist the proud." All right, and I've lived on that for all of my life. And even though I've I've had self damaging things that I've done to myself, okay, when God restored me, the ones who tried to beat me when I was down, the Lord took care of them. Mm-hmm. Some of them are not living to this very day mm. because. They tried to beat me when I was down. Mm. Others, they either got sick or the others were coming to me, apologizing, and saying, please forgive me because I can't come out of this mess until you forgive me mm. over and over again. And I, I, I forgave him before they, even while they were taking me through that dirt. I had to forgive him. I got stabbed severely in my face, in my back and in my chest, left to die on the streets of Chicago. Immediately when I came conscious. I forgave the guy. Mm-hmm. I had to forgive him. Yeah, you need to. What, what other thing that this the had to do? Would have killed you. It would have killed me. Okay, and here, here, our Christ had suffered much violence. Oh my God! But you can't even describe what he went through. And then you know what he said to them? Forgive he, them, Lord, for they know not. They what have they do. no idea what they're doing. And that's what I had to look at. I look at this this fool who killed those nine people in the church. Uh, okay, you see how hard it is for America to, to take this young boy doing this to those people. And in that courthouse, those families said their, their level of forgiveness was impactful. Uh-huh. It impacted. I felt ashamed because I said, I don't think I could have been as forgiving so soon. You was not the only one. All the news pundits, when I was looking at that thing, they says, I, I can't, what is this? And because so they really don't understand. Martyrs. They, that, that's exactly it. They are martyrs, whether they, they intended to be or not. Uh-huh. Yes. Those, those, uh, now watch this. Because you know the flag is coming down eventually. Oh, yeah. But nine more people had to die for that flag to come down. Now, notice I said nine more people mm-hmm. because that flag went up in 1961. Those, those bombings, those four girls that was killed, okay? Yeah. All right? And then there was, other, there was several other shootings in churches. Matter of fact, Martin Luther King's mom was shot in church. Yes. Okay? And, and on and on and on, shooting, shooting, shooting. A lot of it racially, uh, okay? And then... He'll hear the nine, and they're gonna have to call them a name. They probably call them the the martyred nine or something. They call them something. They the had to be martyred. Nine. They, mm-hmm. they 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 are now the poster children for that flag coming down. And it's a shame they had to come to this part. Now, <clears throat> but I don't agree with the flag being tied to the nine deaths. There's two different issues. It's just an opportunity. I it is it always an opportunity. Yes, I know. I can understand the fight though. No, oh, the fight should have been has always been. Yeah. And it's an act of treason to me because it's a representation of the enemy of the state. It is a treason. To put it on a public uh You're waving the flag of another country. And that's <laughs> not that or either that's is that the embassy yeah. of the Confederate States of America mm-hmm. we it's, were at war with? Uh huh. Yeah. It's amazing. that's the only way you could do that. And how did he look at it legally and mm-hmm. deny just turn face from it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's amazing how no one sees it that way. It is another country. Yeah. Not, yeah. Can you imagine Germany flying a Nazi flag Over the at their House. Capitol building? They won't do it. They can't. No. Because they will overthrow. Them. You see what I'm saying? Right. But we put that flag over there. <laughs> South Carolina. Okay. And in and, and that place of all places, <laughs> it don't need to be. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Uh, and I know we flipped, we flipped the script here a little bit, but you know. That's, that's abuse. It is abuse. But that's abuse. But it's American abuse towards yes. those. Who, yeah, who it, they, it's all it's mm-hmm. tied in because mm-hmm. it's abuse. It, it really is. It really is. Uh, and so I think I brought him in because of the tie, the tie of how to be um, forgiving. Forgiving. All right. So someone abused you, you have to forgive them, but you you don't forget because if you start forgetting, you're gonna get abused again. Uh, so the Bible never told you you have to forget. Uh, something that happens against you mm. you need to forgive them right away though because Christ says I can't forgive you if you can't forgive them he says I just can't do it mm, mm, mm. doesn't seem fair does it no no that's well you keep living you'll understand I want to hear some Arnold Krauss as we go to this last break 
He's singing a song, one of my favorite songs of his from this last project called The Journey. It is an amazing, amazing song. Uh, it's very short, not very long. It's just the choir singing. It's called God is on our side. Y'all take, take a listen to it. And if you're in this situation of domestic abuse, don't forget. I know we can get help from counselors and from our boys and, and pastors and other people. But don't forget, God is the one who created us and he's the one that can fix it. All right? You, your, your, your car breaks. Don't take it to the shade tree mechanic. Take it to the dealer. Because it's going to get fixed. Right. They're going to give us some new parts. <laughs> Genuine. Yes, sir. Authentic. Authentic. Parts. Absolutely. And you can return it for, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. God is on our side. So are the Junk Show. God is on our side. Andre Crouch. Great song. Great moving song. Beautiful song. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It didn't take a whole lot. It makes anybody become a choir director. It sure do. Yeah, you just want to wave your head. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you can't go wrong with the writing of Andre oh Crouch. My God. God rest his soul. And you should have followed that with Thomas Whitfield's God mm-hmm. is on our side. Oh, yeah, that would be a good one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, is that what it's called? It's God is on our side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's Sing a, it. God is on our side. Okay. All those key changes. That's true. I remember that. God is on our side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't remember if I loaded it in there, but that would be a great outro. Leap for joy, oh you people. Let yeah. Me, let, the, let the voices ring. Yeah. 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 Come when may, God is on our side. Since I, I knew I couldn't call the police. This is from the article. I keep, keep reading it, but the, oh, the, yes. they, they would have arrested me just because I'm a male. Uh, she then threatened to kill everyone in the house and <laughs> took our daughter, said she would make sure I never saw her again, got in the car and took off. The next day, I filed for orders of protection against her along with the divorce. I noticed that the, the city PD about the death threats. No, she says, he says, I notified the city PD about the death threats. They said they couldn't help me until she followed through with it. He said, I'm not kidding. They have to kill him first. Then they'll follow through. <laughs> Ain't that something? Yeah. And then what good is that? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Hey, good? man, you dead? You sure? You sure okay. Now. now I can. Yeah. Now I can. Now I can help. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the county sheriff went to serve her with the orders of protection and the divorce papers. She evaded the county sheriff for a week. She checked out. She checked into an abusive women's shelter. She went to a, d- a, dist- a district court and had orders f- filed against me. He says, and and and, and this article goes on, but. I remember talking to a friend who said that uh, he he hit he hit a mailbox or something because he was over there to his uh, to his estranged wife at the time, and uh, the and she called the police said that he tried to hit her or something like that and they arrested him. Okay, so as he goes to court, 
uh, he's with this woman as he was the woman, one of the court workers, what have you, was walking him into the court. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'll never forget what he said. He said the woman turned to him and says, now you see where we getting ready to walk in? He says, yes. He says, that's a place where they, where they murder men or something like that. Where they, where they emasculate men. And he was like, what do you mean? He says, yeah, that court right there. He says, when you go in there, most men here will go to the chopping block. Oh, uh-huh. Yeah. Imagery. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. The imagery. Yeah, because um, the, the courts have always been on the side of the woman, of the woman no matter what the case is. Whether it's domestic violence, uh-huh. whether it's um, custody, child mm-hmm. custody, mm-hmm. it's always on the mm-hmm. side of the woman. Mm-hmm. It, goes, it goes on, yeah, the side of the woman in that case, okay? Now, Tomorrow, though, what we need to bring out, though, when it comes to raping a woman, ah. then it's it's almost a flip situation. Yeah. Because many women, you know, there's a lot of there's always this there's this rape kit that they that they give. OK. Mm-hmm. And and they said thousands of rape kits are sitting up there, been sitting up there for years, never been open, never been tested, what have you. Uh, coupled with so many women who don't even report. All right, mm. and then when she when she cries the rape and then she tries to defend it, a good lawyer will have it thrown out. Mm. I remember we did the Edith Bunker effect. Yeah, there's an episode on family on on what's, what's all the show? family all in the family where she got raped. The she she, she to tried rape to try yes. to rape. Okay, so what they did was they tried. So they brought the lawyer came over to the house to try to show her what's going to happen in court if she fights this. Mm-hmm. And he kept barraging her and barraging her about, oh, you is what you was wearing. So you know this guy. Why? Why was your? Why was you showing cleavage? Why were you doing this? Why were you doing that? And and Meathead and his wife was like, what are you doing? You act. She's a victim. And why were you treating her like this? And the lawyer says, that's what's going to happen in court. You're going to come to this court, and the rapist is going to have a lawyer, and and his job is to get the rapist off. And he's going to make it look like you the victim. You, have, you you wanted this to happen. You made him the victim. You made him the victim. You lured him. You in. lured the man. Yes. And so, so many women lose these cases because uh, you have to you have to be creative to turn the tables and say, "Oh, you lured this." All right. Mm-hmm. So, my friend, it was different when it came to the abuse, domestic abuse, because. Uh, uh, when it comes to when you when you when you're dealing with let's say divorce court, when you're dealing with uh, domestic abuse cases, what have you, uh, in the court where he was going to, she knew when you go in there, you're gonna lose, you're mm-hmm. gonna lose mm-hmm. regardless. Uh, and it's amazing how the how it's the, the double standard work in America, or uh, working with and and with the courts, okay. Mm-hmm. Whether you got a and then it depends on whether you got a male judge or you got a female judge. Yeah, those mm-hmm. are all. Mm-hmm. Variables that will determine the outcome. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is, and that's a shame because the law is supposed to be blind. It's supposed to be blind. Is it blind? No, 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 no. No, I mean, <laughs> the enforcers of the law are not blind. Mm-hmm. Think about the young man. They they apprehended him. They were gentle. He didn't have one mark on his body. In fact, they put a bulletproof vest on. Him. Yep, and they have to do it. They wouldn't have done it to one of us, depending on the case. I don't know if that means you. Is that a break? <laughs> That's probably my my iPad. You know the commercials. Yeah. <laughs> and I can't turn it off. Mm, mm, mm. Unless I do this, let's see if that happens. Okay. Yeah. It's a, uh, you know, you're reading these articles and then they're oh, all yeah, commercials. They just popping boom. commercials. Oh. Uh, everybody in the room. Shameless looking, plug. Everybody in the room looking around like, is that my Who's phone? phone? Is that my phone? Is that my phone? Who's that? My daughter behind me. Like, that, that's not my phone, daddy. That's my phone. What do you mean? Back in church. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, we're in class. I love yeah. it when it happens in class. He, now, why would a room full of fourth graders even have cell phones? Uh-huh. Then, whose phone? <laughs> Raise your hand if it's your phone. No hand goes up. <laughs> what? No hand goes the up. The world that you live in. But this says this says um, women are more likely to be intimate terrorists with controlling behavior. That is so scary in relationships. Yeah, they would intimate terrorists. Yes. Why do they say that? Because they catch you at intimate moments or intimate times, uh-huh. and they terrorize you. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, they, they uh, put you in a headlock when mm-hmm. they say they're just hugging, hugging you. Mm-hmm. 
Smother you with a pillow. So yeah. Not just smother you with love. <laughs> smother you, you with know, a pillow. Use teeth at the wrong time. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Wow. Right. Mm. Well, it says relationships can be an emotional roller coaster. Throughout the ride, men and women can be everything from loving to nurturing mm -hmm. to sometimes verbally and eventually even physically abusive during the fights. While aggression in heterosexual relationships is believed to stem from men, a recent study presented on June 25 at the Symposium on Intimate Partner uh, Violence, IPV, at the British Psychological Society Division of Forensic Psychology Annual Conference. That's a long yeah. list here. At Glasnow, a uh, Glasgow, I found women are more likely to be intimate terrorists or physically aggressive to their partners than men. Michael Johnson, an American psychologist, coined the term intimate terrorism or batterers or abusers in the 1990s to, def to define an extreme form of controlling relationship between uh, behaviors involving threats, intimidation, and violence. Men were almost always responsible for these heinous acts. Uh, this belief is further supported by statistics highlighting nearly three in 10 women, that's 29%, and one in 10 men, 10% in the U.S., have experienced rape, physical violence, and or stalking by a partner, mm. affecting some form of their functioning, according to the Centers for Disease Control and and prevention. I think that's the CDC, right? Yeah, CDC. To observe the dynamic and <clears throat> prevalence of intimate partner violence of men and women in heterosexual relationships, Dr. Elizabeth Bates from the University of Cum uh, Cumbria and colleagues from the University of Central Lancaster conducted a survey collecting data from the large cohort of students, more than a thousand students, 706 women and 398 men with the average of the age of 24. Responded to questionnaires. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. How many women again? 706. Man, that's like three to one mm -hmm. ratio. Yeah. Women to men. Mm -hmm. So, okay. That sure. don't sound too fair to me. It doesn't sound fair at all, does it? But, but there must be a reason why. Okay. And they're trying to get a point here. That's why they gave more women. But the, the students were asked about their, psycho their physical aggression and controlling behavior to partners and to same-sex others. Uh, including friends. The findings revealed such, uh, just as many women as men c could also be classed as abusive, coupled with controlling behavior with serious levels of threats, intimidation, and physical violence. Women were more likely to verbally and physically aggression to their partners than men. This study found that women demonstrated a desire to control their partners and were more likely to use physical aggression than men. Mm. It wasn't just... Pushing and shoving, said Bates. Medical Express reported some of the survey responds, re respondents circled boxes for things like beating up, and kicking, and even threatening to use a weapon. Who? Okay. Uh, and again, we see these on these, uh, what's that website? Uh, it's a urban website. They always put all these videos, violent videos. Hip hop, uh, something. Yeah, world star hip hop. Yeah, and that's all you see, and it's usually young people. Yeah, acting a darn fool. A complete. And it's a lot of them are women. Oh yeah, little girls fighting little girls or fighting boys. Yes, until the boy beat her behind, mm -hmm. and then now was like, how dare he do this? That's a girl. Oh, now, he, now he, it, did he go yeah. too far? Yeah. Now he, 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 here's how how it plays out. It's a whole bunch of kids in the street, and they're egging her on to hit him. They're egging her on. The power of mob okay. action. Mob action. Now, once he hits her, Not then him. the mob is, she's a girl. Why would you hit her? Right. Don't do it. Now they're trying to pull him off of her before he kills her. Okay. This this is um, <laughs> this is an epidemic. Huge epidemic. Yeah. Among not just the young people, but where are they getting it from? Who are they getting it from? I don't know, because if we could find the source, we could eliminate it. Well, yeah, but evidently, maybe. it's in the media, number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, they are accustomed to the training of boys don't hit girls. Yes. You're just supposed to take it. Not mm -hmm. me. Hit me, I'm hitting you back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Number three, because I turn the other cheek so I can get a better view. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> Bam. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> then... 
the attention that comes. After so long, the man, if he responds or strikes back, he's no longer concerned about the crowd. Right. He snaps. He snaps. Yeah, he's blind to the crowd. Yeah. He snaps. Yeah. And it's too late. It's too late at that Um, point. It's too late. And sometimes they use that as an excuse because, hey, I want you to hit me. I want you to hit me because I'm going to call so-and-so and and I'm going to call so-and-so. And And in the back of his mind, he has waited. Yes. And he's restrained himself. And his restraint is now being used as a weakness against him. Absolutely. And after a while, he said, you won't just have to call them. Yes, yes, because I'm, 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 um, go- I'm they, going they, for blood. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah and yeah. if they get there soon enough, maybe mm-hmm. calling them would be a mistake. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. That's Cause, going all through his Because I've seen that happen, too. Yes, sir. Where she thought she had help. Uh-huh. The help came. Uh-huh. And the help was weaker than she was. Weaker, yeah. Absolutely. Or they appeared weaker because once that adrenaline grows, it's mm-hmm. like the... the the imagery of the Hulk yeah, is beautiful in this example. Something triggers that response from the character of the Hulk. That's true. And all reason. Now, how is it the same brain that's in Bruce Banner is also in the Hulk? Mm-hmm. All that intelligence, all that wit, mm-hmm. all of that. But when he goes and he transforms into the Hulk, mm-hmm. it all goes out the window and all he does is smash. That's it. Yeah. So do you want to see? You're trying to whoop Bruce Banner. Right. But then you beat him so long, then Hulk resurrects mm-hmm. or, or erects or mm-hmm. transforms or whatever the sure. word you want to use. Now you're mad. Now you're mad. Because the backlash. But had you just let it go. Right. And had a peaceful sense. Act like you had some sense at least, even right. if you didn't have none. Act like you Act had like some. It. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's still a man first. Right. And you know what? We face the same abuse as teachers because students do the same thing because hmm. they feel protected by some form of the culture. It's a false sense of protection. Mm-hmm. That they can say what they want. They do it to police officers mm-hmm. at times on the street. Mm-hmm. They forget that they're men or that they're officers of the court. Now, they, they feel for whatever reason. Now, I'm not saying that police abuse is justified. I'm not saying that because there are many times where it's not. The point I'm saying is there comes a level where you have to learn to respect authority. Right. Every individual's authority. Mm-hmm. You have some. You have some. Everybody has some authority mm-hmm. that needs to be respected. So when that person says stop, when that person says I'm done, or that whatever those, whenever, whatever it gets to a point where they feel the need to not continue, that needs to be respected. Absolutely. It's like in the rape situation. No means no. Right. I don't care if she did flirt with you. I don't care if she did arouse you. If she didn't want, she didn't want to. No right. means no. No means no. There's no tease law. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it should not be an appease law. I, I'm sorry, you're going to have to take this woman because I feel like fighting now. No. No, no, no. You don't have a right. Uh, Lori Sanders, this says uh, my ex-husband and wife abused him. Uh, she would stab him. Ooh. Uh, beat him. Hit him. Uh, hit him the head hit, uh, with the lead pipes. <clears throat> I sometimes wondered if that's what you get when you think the grass is greener on the other side. I actually felt sorry for him. Oh, well, I, I can see why. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Uh, yeah, you do chase after the green grass, not realizing there's poison in that. Don't grass. let the green grass fool you. Yeah, don't let it fool you. Uh, Michelle Thompson, <clears throat> Thomas says that a woman uh, can come from a home where she sees nothing but abuse and commit to herself that she would never be abused. She'll abuse before she, oh, before she allows him herself to be abused. And that's so true. it's preventive. She it, thinks yep. it's going to happen to her. Yep. So she starts to do it. Absolutely. So that's fear. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. Insecurity. Yeah. Cowardice. Yeah, it is. It is. But he also says, I've uh, even heard it from a police officer. Nine times out of ten, when we get a domestic situation, we're looking to get that man out of that house. Yep. I've heard that, too. Uh, I was not saying. Okay. Yeah. It, it's It's not fair. That study should have been taken with 50% both men and women for it to be valid. Yeah. And, and there must have been a reason why they, they pulled more women. Well, probably to see the consistency. Yeah. Because men aren't going to be as honest mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. or come forth. But when it's 50-50, it's questionable in that case. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I think because the polls showed that the violence came from more from women mm-hmm. and those numbers are measured. I was just listening to the numbers before I heard the report. So I can see the credibility there. Yeah. Um, there's always a, a, a margin of error, but still. Yeah. I don't it, think it's that It's scary. like running track. Notice how they put one person in front of the other. And it seems unfair, doesn't it? But the positioning of the lane. Well, it's it, the positioning of the lane. Not so much the positioning of the lane. Well, it's the it's the, oval, the inside. It's the ovalness of the track. Yeah. That's what I meant by the Yeah. Lane, the, 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 
the, what's the word? The, the, the pitch and the dimensions the, and the position yeah, of the lane. It's, it's a it's, symmetric thing. Because if you're yeah. inside, mm-hmm. the turn is absolutely less that's it. than the wider uh-huh. turn. So, so we looking on TV said, that's not fair. They put her in front of him. But no, it's they're not running the same way. No, they're not. <laughs> no, they're yeah. not. They're yeah. going in a direction, but right. that turn is wider. So the turn is wider, so they're going far. So, and I think that's probably why they gave radius. it. Radius. That's it. Thank you, sir. The, the radius. radius. Yeah. So I think the radius of 700 women towards the, uh, opposed to the 300 so yeah. they, probably they needed to do it that way yes yeah yeah um or the the study wouldn't make wouldn't made any sense uh Abbas Nana says uh they got it they got it from home i raised my son that if uh she wait i raised my son that if she hits you oh you're to hold her down so she, uh she doesn't hurt you yeah you just, I she, think get out the house if you can't do that. Leave, but she's right though. Yeah, you hold Make, her down. You please hold her down. Restrain her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, get them handcuffs out. Then yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. But hold her down. Yeah, because she's she's infuri- infuriated in the situation, and there's nothing. It's like a person who the the hospital does that. Yeah. They'll restrain you. They'll put you in restraints to help you. They restrain you because you'll hurt yourself. Because they ain't, they ain't, they're not gonna slap you. <laughs> Uh, depending on where you are, right? Yeah, the police will slap you. Yeah. And they didn't restrain you. Uh, but why the, they call them orderly? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to get some order in here. Let me yeah. smack you. <laughs> uh, let's see. Somebody wrote earlier uh, that men don't ask for help for nothing. So why would they ask for help for that? You know, they say we don't yeah. want to go to the doctor. True. We won't ask directions. So yeah, that's a lot point. Of men do that. No, yeah, that's the point. That's yeah. a, that part of our pride. Mm-hmm. Uh, Marilyn Akita says, "Are there signs that men should look for at the beginning of a relationship that might suggest future signs of abuse?" Yes, absolutely, and that's a very Great good question. question. Um, I saw signs in my abuse, but I ignored them um, because they might have been disguised. All right, all all people, I believe in my heart of hearts, most people see the signs, but they don't know how to define the signs. Something funny about it. Something but funny, yes. but they can't put their finger on it. And number two, um, we're so caught up into passion and being and falling in love and all that stuff. Yeah. That's being We hidden. can't see the abuse we because of the caboose. It. That that that's true. As funny as that is, that's so true. You can't see the forest for the trees. Uh huh. And then then when we get in that relationship, we still see those signs, but now we can recognize what they are. Uh, and, and then unfortunately, it's too late. Uh, and but so it's like well then we can help people to sh- see the signs well not everybody gonna show the signs the same way though I, I think uh, again in my situation I saw the signs uh, but because you don't really know the person know the person you you, you, you think it might be just you, an isolated moment yeah having a bad day yeah mm-hmm. no ain't no bad day when you talk mm-hmm. to me that kind of way then you have to tap it into the spirit realm because then when you get married, you become one. And now you are, you have a gift of discerning your wife. Well, you got a gift of discerning anybody. Yeah, that, that too. You pray for it. No, yeah. I'm just serious. Sometimes yeah. you, you, you have to pray. Lord. Mm-hmm. Okay, Lord, show me this. Yeah, but, but, but I'm saying. I dated a person and I dated and I said, mm-hmm. I've never saw you angry. Uh-huh. You never show anger. Yeah. I said, I'm just giving you warning. I'm going to. See if I can get you angry. Mm-hmm. Why? Why would you want to do that? I said, I need to see what's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, you, you bold. I'm, no. But no, I, I, I it failed. failed. It sure failed. It did. I don't Miserable. get angry. Yeah. I, re- I, I don't get angry. Yeah. I said, everybody does. Right. They do. I need to see your anger reaction. Mm-hmm. I don't get angry. Mm-hmm. At least like, like that. I just, mm-hmm. I deal with it. If I can't fix it, I move on. Yeah. 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 Well, of course, she moved on. Of course, she did. <laughs> she did. Uh, <laughs> She left me angry. A couple of my exes wanted me to get angry. I don't get angry. Okay, I'm a very mild mannered man. Right. I, put a, I got an mild-minded. S on my chest. Okay, I'm mild mannered. Uh, I'm Clark Kent. Starts with M. I'm, I'm, okay, I'm, I'm M. I'm All right. I'm, I'm Clark. <laughs> Clark Jones. Okay, but what what she tried to do? One of them literally told me, "I did those things because I'm jealous of your spirit." And and I I. I, I I got silent just like that when you when, just like you just did. I got silent. She says, "I'm jealous of your spirit. You're too calm. Nothing bothers you, and I want to stir something up to you." And I said, "That's demonic." Yes. Why would you want to do that to me? Why would you want to stir up that in me? And I said, "Because you're reading me wrong. You're looking at my patience as being weak. You don't know the battle inside of me to be act you this have, way. You have no idea. I've come too far. How do like I get that? here? How did right. I get here? You don't know mm-hmm. what I was like as a child. You have don't no know idea. What God took away from me. And how was it that I?" I'm so you well. You don't know me. No, right, me right, stop. right. <laughs> How am I so well loved in the communities and in my circles and where I go? If 
I was this weakling. It's a part of the character. It's you see what I'm saying? And I can get whatever I want. I can call I can call so many people right now if I'm in trouble, they come in and I got in trouble, Doc. I remember when I got in serious trouble. Everybody came to my help. How was that possible? To go they to saw God. you worthy of the assistance. That's, that's my point there. And that's why I keep stressing on the fruit of the spirit, the love and the joy and the peace and all those other things that come after that. Yes. You got to have those first three, though. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, they're like the core and the, the yes. meat of the fruit. Absolutely. The rest are like the peel. Yes, it really is. And you need the peel of mm-hmm. the fruit for the appeal of the fruit to, to be to identified on, yeah. as well as the protection yes. that the peel offers to the fruit. That's it. And some peel can be eaten. And other peels are tossed away you see? for the reproduction of future fruit trees. And that's the part of the long suffering. Yes. Fruit suffers. Yeah. Basically. Especially if it's in the it's in the it's in the backyard in an African American community. Oh my God. <laughs> You're picking my preachers out of my Ooh, wee. <laughs> little crab apples. Yeah. <laughs> but fruit sometimes it doesn't rain properly in certain territories and it yes, suffers. It sometimes suffers. it rots or it doesn't grow it doesn't mature properly. Yeah. Okay? Or it is abused or some someone uh some of the animals or in it the stays elements. on the vine too uh-huh. long too and long. I picked Absolutely. Yeah. So there's an abuse of, so that's the long suffering of the fruit. Of the spirit. No, this is, there's no S at the end. I know it's people. fruit. Yeah, One. They don't know mm-hmm. how to read, man. They don't know how to read. Yeah. So if you exemplify the fruit of the spirit, you're going to suffer yeah. in that fruit. Uh, but the rewards that oh, it's just amazing. Man. Hallelujah. Yeah, he yeah. won't spew you out. Yeah, that's the reward. Yes, yeah, that's the reward. He, need you. he won't see because mm-hmm. you can be that fig tree when had figs when he mm-hmm. had needed them. Mm-hmm. Have to have needed you. Mm-hmm. Or you yes, walk sir. past that fig. Fig is fruit. You understand? Fig is fruit. Yeah, yeah. And when he saw that tree with leaves. He didn't see no figs. He thought it had leaves. That means it was supposed to have fruit and had no fruit. Somebody gave a sermon, nothing but leaves. Mm, just leave me alone. <laughs> leave me nothing. Leave me nothing. <laughs> Listen, y'all, I got to get out of here. Uh, we were at the, that five-minute block. And I don't know. My, I got a new engineer, so we're trying to find our way through here. But um, I do have a uh, an exit theme song. And we we forgot to look for that. Uh, I want to, First of all, I want to thank God for Jonathan being here. He's usually upstairs trying yeah. to handle... Uh, yeah, uh, he's a letter. He yeah, yeah. So uh, I didn't show him where that in- the exit theme is. So if you don't find it, you can just play the opening theme, and that'll be our exit out of here. Okay, uh, and then maybe next week. We'll, well, before we leave here, we have to show our new engineer where to find those two intro and outro. Okay, That's, so his name is Jonathan. Yeah, I uh, thought it was Joe Nathan. Joe Nathan. Yeah, it's the same thing. Okay, depending on what territory you yeah. live. Joe Nathan. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Great show. Go to Spreaker.com. Uh, it'll be up t- uh, tonight at some point. Uh, I'm going to go hang out with my baby girl, Rebecca. Uh, she Ooh. here in the room just being just pretty. She's just EWF? pretty. EWF? Right. Ooh, that girl right there. Just, she just blew hey, my your mind. Daughter. Will you stop? Yeah. That's what? your daughter. That's a beautiful. Shut, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> that's, my, that's my sweetheart there right there. There goes my. Better, better than any woman I've ever, ever been yeah, with. She's that's, become the other woman in your life. She is, she is. You need to hear that song she, by Lonnie Harris. Oh, yeah? It's the called other, The Other Woman. Lonnie, Lonnie Harris, Harris yes. of all people? Yes. Wow. Look that up. It's a beautiful song. Oh, okay. Well, okay. I, I guess I will. You'll Tomorrow, love it. tomorrow we got uh, Tara uh, Joseph. Uh, she says uh, domestic violence happens at an alarming rate for men. The unfortunate part is many men don't speak out about of the shame, uh, because of the shame that is. She'll be on our show tomorrow. She'll be calling all the way from out of town, <laughs> all the way from out of town, on the phone. Oh, she gonna be in Harvey. She, yeah, she, uh, huh? Harvey's out of yeah, town. Yeah, Harvey is out of town. <laughs> Some of my neighborhoods in Chicago uh, feel like it's out of town. Right. And um, we'll hear her testimony on abuse in her uh, between her and, and her ex. Okay, uh, shocking story. By the yeah, way. yeah, yeah. So tune in tomorrow, Tuesday, Pink Perspective. We got we have a new uh, engineer tomorrow, and. Um, and uh, we talk about, we're going to have to talk about black businesses when we get a chance, all right? Ooh. Lord help us today. Why do they fail? Why do, <laughs> yeah, why do they fail me? <laughs> Gotta go. That's an even greater point. Yeah, it is. So, Walter Jones Show. Yeah.